Hey everyone, my name is Wes. Welcome to today's lesson. Um, today, I think it's a fun lesson. It's a cultural lesson because what we're going to talk about, what I want to teach you about is St. Patrick's Day. So this is a St. Patrick's Day English lesson um, because it's coming up. It's right around the corner. So I thought this would be a, a good time to, to teach you a little bit about St. Patrick's Day while at the same time uh, also kind of teaching you different vocabulary words related to this day. Um, so before we jump into this uh, activity, the different activities that I have for you, uh, I just want to say a quick hello, give some shout outs, and I want to say hello to Lolly. Good to see you. Uh, Takayo, hi, how are you? Um, Sajad, uh, Lara, Farman, Angela Sleepwalker, good to see you. I've, I've been a, I've been away for about two weeks now. This is the the first live lesson I've done in a few weeks, so it's good to be back. Um, first off, so today's lesson it is more interactive. I want you guys to participate. Write your answers in the chat. Even if you're watching this later, throw your answers down in the comments. Use it like it's a piece of paper. Make it more of an active learning exercise which is what which is what I'm all about is just trying to make more make things more active learning because I think that's just I think that's a little more helpful than just passive learning. So uh hello uh Kathusello Kathusello nice to see you. All right. Hello. How are you? Um sorry if I mispronounced names. I apologize. Um I'm going to get better at this. So as we go through, I will give more shout outs uh, later on. So let's, this is kind of what's on the agenda. First, I'll say happy St. Patrick's Day, even though, even though today is not St. Patri Patrick's Day, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, and we're going to do a little pronunciation practice to begin with. And then it is a, I guess you could say it's a cultural quiz plus vocabulary. I'm going to really be doing those at the same time. So as we go through this, again, I want you guys to participate, write your answers in the chat, and I hope that all of you learn something new from today's lesson. So let's begin with pronunciation, and I think a fun way to, well, I think to practice pronunciation is with a tongue twister. So when you think of St. Patrick's Day, I think many of you think of, well, you, should, you would think of Ireland, so this is a tongue twister, and the, the goal of this one, I think, is just to say it several times as quickly as you can. And this is actually really difficult because Irish, it ends with that shh sound, and you, it's kind of like, if you're trying to think about this sound, like you're telling somebody to be quiet, like shh. And then the next sound, wristwatch, that is a silent W, so it begins with R. And going from that shh to an R sound is pretty difficult. So that's why I think saying these two words, at least for me, it's really challenging. Um, it's a it's a good, this is a good tongue twister. Irish, Irish, <laughs> wristwatch. So Irish, Irish, and then switch to that R sound. It's like you're, you have to pull your jaw back, wristwatch. Um, Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. So let me let's try to say it say it with me. Try to say it a few times. And again, I think with this the goal is to say it quickly because you're going to make a mistake. So I'm just going to say it 3 times quickly and you can listen to how poor my pronunciation is with this. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Okay. Irish wristwatch. Irish wristwatch, Irish wristwatch, Irish wristwatch. <laughs> so it almost, I think, ends up saying Irish rish wristwatch. It's hard to transition from that SH sound, that shh, to an er. And I again, one way to do it would be thinking like you're saying shh, telling somebody to be quiet, to a smile, er, wristwatch. Irish wristwatch. Irish, I'll try it three more times quickly. Irish wristwatch, Irish wristwatch, Irish wristwatch. <laughs> okay, all right. I hope that you um, are able to do this pro possibly a little more accurately than I can, um, is just to, to say it quickly. So this, I think, is a good 
good tongue twister to start out because we're talking about St. Patrick's Day. Um, you might think of Ireland, and if you are, well, somebody um, from Ireland, they would say they are Irish. Um, so, <laughs> some of you think, yes, Lolly, it's not... Not easy. Wow. Uh, but we got a piece of cake. Excellent. All right. So I think it's interesting because I think where, um, depending on where you're from, maybe some certain sounds that you might found di find difficult, some tongue twisters uh, may be very difficult, and then others may be pretty easy. I think, and that's the same, uh, I think that's the same for native speakers. Even native English speakers might have, um, find some tongue twisters easy and then others a little more difficult and it's going to be different for each person this one for me i, I well i think you heard is kind of uh difficult so let's uh well get into some questions we're talking about saint patrick's day so the first question that i have for you um is this one which is going to give you a little more information about this holiday so I have that one blank spot in there. I'm not giving you any uh, multiple choice uh, answers. So uh, just let me know what you guys think from what you know about this holiday. St. Patrick's Day is a cultural and religious celebration held on March what? The traditional death of St. Patrick, the foremost paint saint, uh, patron saint of Ireland. So we're talking about the death of St. Patrick the patron saint of Ireland. Uh, so that day, St. Patrick's Day this year is on March what? What is uh, the answer? What do you guys think? Um, so I told you, uh, you, you know that today, today is not St. Patrick's Day. I told you that. It's coming up. And St. Patrick's Day, yes, excellent. Uh, curiosidades, uh, ten critica. Um, whoop, Lala, you're off by one day. Uh, Abdi Rashad, the, the answer is the 17th, all right? March 17 is St. Patrick's Day. So this is when St. Patrick's Day is always celebrated. It's the traditional death of St. Patrick. I was trying to look up, I think people believe this was the day um, in which St. Patrick died. I don't know if... People are absolutely positive about that, but that's what they believe. So, therefore, uh, St. Patrick's Day is on March 17th, which this year is going to be this coming Wednesday. This coming Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day. Excellent. Uh, the next question that I have for you is this one. And again, this is kind of, well, learning about the the this this cultural holiday as well as some vocabulary. The M mm is a symbol of Ireland. The name comes from Irish. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because I think maybe I'll be giving the answer away. Um, but I'll skip over that, which is uh, the diminutive of the Irish word. <laughs> and I'll, I'll skip over that. My probably, I'm sure my pronunciation would be horrible. And it simply means young clover. So what word are we talking about, which the, the word, this, this is a symbol of Ireland. I told you where the name comes from. It's the diminutive. The diminutive of something means kind of like the shortened, the shortened form um, of this other word. So this word is the diminutive of this other word. And, and really what it means is young clover. That's what it means. Uh, what, what do you think is the symbol of Ireland? I gave you those pictures down there, and then we're going to follow up and kind of give you a little bit more information about this. So think about it. This is the symbol of Ireland. What do you call those, uh, well, those pictures down there? Um, excellent. Yes. Uh, critique, uh, critica, lolly. Uh, perfect. The answer is a shamrock. So... The shamrock is a symbol of Ireland, and it comes from that I Irish uh, shamrock. I don't know if it would be pronounced shamrock, which is the diminutive of the Irish word shamrock og, which means young clover. So shamrock means young clover. Excellent. Uh, great job. I think some of you got that. Excellent. Gustav. Perfect. Um, Luke English addict. All right. Katie K. 
Katie Delio, nice. So I'm gonna follow up on this because some of you were, were thinking about uh, another word. So shamrock is really, it means young clover. It is a type of, uh, well, there are different types of clovers. So basically those, uh, those two, these two pictures right here, those are shamrocks. They are also, they're clovers, but they're different clovers. Now, one of them, it says the mm clover is very rare. According to, tra to traditional sayings, such clovers bring good luck. So this one, I'm giving you the multiple choice. There are only two choices um, because those are two different, uh, they're both shamrocks, but they're two different clovers. One is a three leaf clover. The other one is a four leaf clover. So which of those clovers is the rare one that people would believe, oh, this this brings good luck? I believe um, that this would be good luck. What do you guys think? Let me know. Write your answers again in the comments, uh, even if you're watching this later. Excellent. Uh, Takayo, Suhana, uh, Laura, Alpha, uh, Athan Athanasios, Excellent, Angela. Yes, the answer, Tatiana, the answer is B. We're talking about the four-leaf clover um, is the rare one. Uh, the the three-leaf clover is much more common. So according to the tradition, if you find a four-leaf clover, it, it brings good luck. Then we have some other questions. This is kind of a little more of a story, which we'll kind of walk through. Or not, not a story, before we get to that, this, this right here. So... My question about this, first I'll just read it and then you can listen to it. There was an old man from Peru who dreamed he was eating his shoe. He awoke one night with a terrible fright and found out that it was quite true. All right, this, just listening to me read it, you can tell this is a poem, but what kind of poem is it? That's the question that I wanted to ask you. And I'll, this may be a little more challenging, I don't know how familiar many of you are with different types of poems. Um, but what do you think? What is this poem called? In, in English, there was an old man from Peru who dreamed he was eating his shoe. He awoke one night with a terrible fright and found out that it was quite true. These poems are, I don't, I don't know if you would say, I would say they're common. It really just depends. They're very short poems. They're humorous poems. That's the, they, they follow a certain pattern and you would call this poem what? And I tried to find a picture and made that old man like, look like he's eating a shoe. So I, if you just read it, you can tell like, okay, it, it is supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be a funny, humorous poem. Um, what would you call it? Uh, <laughs> a nightmare. No, uh, it's not a nightmare. Uh, even though, yes, that would be horrible to wake up and you're eating your shoe. Not a stanza. These are good guesses. Again, these are um, stanzas related. Stanza is more like a, kind of a, a paragraph, the same way um, essays would have different paragraphs. Poems would have different stanzas. Excellent. Uh, Vicky, Gustav, yes. This is a limerick. So a limerick, I told you they're humorous poems and they have that rhyme pattern a a b b a so a a b b a let's look at this you can see that those words rhyme peru shoe true um this the first second and fifth line and then the third and fourth line are also going to rhyme night and fright there was an old man from peru who dreamed he was eating his shoe he awoke one night with a terrible fright and found out that it was quite true. So this is uh, this is an example of a limerick, and the reason why I put this in there related to Ireland, many, I think some people believe that the name of this comes after the, the city in Ireland, the city of Limerick, even though when I was trying to read a little bit more about it, some people believe that some of the first the styles of this poem actually came from the UK, so I'm not really positive uh, exactly where the name come, came from, but many people believe that the name of this poem, this type of poem, comes from Limerick, Ireland, the name of the city. So I told you that I did have some vocabulary words that are 
related to the culture uh, or related to St. Patrick's Day. So this will, I think this first question's a little easier and then maybe it'll get a little more difficult. We'll see. Many of you may be familiar with this, especially if you celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So on St. Patrick's Day, you're supposed to wear what? All right, what are you supposed to wear on St. Patrick's Day? Write your answers in the chat. The reason also why you might be wondering while I'm why I'm doing this, I am from the United States. I'm not from Ireland, but St. Patrick's Day is coming up in the U.S. It is still um, it is like it's still a holiday that many people will celebrate. And I would say that you you don't have to be Irish to participate and celebrate in St. Patrick's Day. I think this is a day that many people in the United States, they will get together with their friends, they'll go out, they'll have some drinks. Um, and yeah, I think many people will celebrate St. Patrick's Day, similar to the way people, many people will celebrate Cinco de Mayo in the United States. Excellent, so uh, you're supposed to wear green. Perfect. So green is the answer. I've even tried. I don't know if you guys can tell just watching this video. Um, this is a very, very dark green, a very hunter green uh, sweatshirt that I'm wearing. So excellent. Um, Laura, Esther, uh, Caddy, Sleepwalker, uh, Angela, German. Perfect. So you're, you're supposed to wear green on St. Patrick's Day. And let's add to this. On St. Patrick's Day, you're supposed to wear green. This tradition is tied to folklore that says wearing green will make you invisible to... What? All right. <laughs> so this is part of the folklore of St. Patrick's Day as to why you should wear green. If you wear green, then you will, you will be invisible. So think about why. Why would you want to be invisible on St. Patrick's Day. Who do you who do you not want to see you? So basically you are invisible to someone. I'll go ahead and tell you that. So what do you guys think? Uh, your the folklore says that when you wear green, you are invisible to to whom? All right. And I think again this is another this well this group of people uh, associated with St. Patrick's Day. Perfect. Uh, yes, Oleg, uh, Lolly, you guys got it. The answer is leprechauns. So the tradition uh, that is tied to folklore that when you wear green, you are invisible to leprechauns. The leprechauns, they cannot see you. And well, one of the reasons why you don't want them to see you is let's continue this is because leprechauns like to mm, anyone they can see okay so i told you that we, we kind of started up here reading through um part of this uh holiday on saint patrick's day you're supposed to wear green the tradition is tied to folklore that says wearing green will make you invisible to leprechauns and this is because leprechauns like to mm, anyone they can see. So what do, if, if it's St. Patrick's Day, this is the folklore. Uh, if leprechauns can, you're not wearing green, leprechauns can see you, what will they do? <laughs> That's the question. So that they lolly bother. Yes, they do bother you, but how? How do they bother you? Uh, what do they, what would a leprechaun do? And again, think about, I would tell you to think about St. Patrick's Day, what happens. Of course, if uh, if many of you, if you're not familiar with St. Patrick's Day, that might be, this may be a little difficult, um, a little more challenging. Uh, excellent. Uh, well, Tatiana, close, maybe. Um, Laura, you got it. Perfect. So, <laughs> kidnap or steal. Uh, so, we're talking about, um, yes, perfect. Gustav, nice they would pinch anyone that they can see because that is at least I think of when, when I was, well, when I was younger, especially at school, uh, St. Patrick's day, you'd show up to school. Many people would wear green. And if they didn't, maybe your friends would come around, um, and pinch you. 
typically in high school, maybe your friends might punch you in the shoulder or something like that. But uh, the the folklore would go that the leprechauns would, if, if you are not invisible because you're not wearing green, the leprechauns would uh, pinch anyone that they could see. So I mean, maybe I don't, some of you put like, play tricks a kind of maybe that that might also be it uh this is the information that i found <laughs> mostly mostly thanks to wikipedia i will uh, i will credit that even though that's not the most solid of sources so the next one the next question that i have for you speaking continuing talking about leprechauns and of course you can find a leprechaun's pot of gold at the what where might you go uh, to find a leprechaun's pot of gold? This is, again, c based on the folklore, the tradition, where people would say that um, leprechauns would guard their pot of gold. Where would it be? Where? What? How would you best complete that sentence? All right. You can try to find a leprechaun's pot of gold at the what? All right. I think many of you may, maybe you're a little familiar with this part of the folklore, the tradition, especially if some of the other questions had been a little more difficult. Um, perfect. Yes. Uh, Lolly. Uh, Angela. Per Sylvia. Perfect. Yes, that is the actual curiosity. That is the specific part. Um, Lucian. Excellent. Uh, Elian. Laura, we're talking about it. It is the rainbow. Specifically, you would finish that and say the end of the rainbow. That at the end of the rainbow is where you will find uh, a leprechaun's pot of gold. All right. So these are again. Uh, it was kind of a mix between teaching you a little bit about St. Patrick's Day, the history, some of the folklore behind it, as well as some of that vocabulary related to it. Of course, you know the color green. Um, but uh, leprechauns, they would pinch people. And of course, you might think of like those, a clover, you have a four leaf clover, good luck, a three leaf clover. And those are shamrocks, which is the symbol of Ireland. So I hope you learned something new from this lesson. I know it was a little bit short and sweet, but I hope maybe you learned some new words or phrases, or even just learn something in general about St. Patrick's Day, which remember is on March 17th, which is this Wednesday. Uh, I really appreciate you guys being here with me today. Uh, if you guys enjoy these lessons, if you like what we do at Interactive English uh, and want to uh, join our community and become a member, a patron, links uh, to that are down below in the description. Also, if you uh, want to join, you can join our email list. There's also a link down below to that in the description. It's a great way to keep in, uh, you can keep in touch with me. Uh, you can get access to the secret fluency lesson. We'll send some updates from time to time. I also send out some resources and I do not overwhelm you with a bunch of emails. Um, and of course you can unsubscribe anytime you want, but it's a good way to keep in touch uh, with me. But thank you guys so much for being here. I know I told you this was kind of a, a short and sweet lesson. But I will, uh, I'm planning to come back next week with uh, another lesson. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, MZZ, Lolly, uh, Marcos, perhaps uh, Lucien, in, in the future, I will do a Q&A and then get to more some more specific questions. Uh, Yash, uh, and Athanasios, uh, Gustav, Vicky, Angela, Oleg, Laura, Kariasirari, Sisi, Takayo, uh, Katie Delio, trying to get in as many shout outs uh, as I possibly can. Young Su Suhana, and I apologize too if I mispronounce names. Of course, you guys, I'm, I'm sure you're well aware of uh, maybe the many mispronun many pronunciation mistakes that I make when it comes to some of these names. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you next time.